help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Maybe so. Your lips. 
Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord say, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ, the new creation has come, 
The old is gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise now to read of the Holy Gospel and join in our Alleluia refrain. Hallelujah. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel, appointed for our installation service, is taken from the Gospel of St. John, the 10th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hears his voice, and he calls his own by name and, they, and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Now this figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find the pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd, this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated.
creation is formed. Why did God institute the office of the holy ministry? Why are pastors called into this holy office? And what is one of the most important activities that a congregation will be engaged in along with her pastor? Why endeavor to start a new mission in a new location? Let me begin in answering these questions by sharing with you two of the script for one of the scripture passages. There are two actually for this sermon, but I want to begin with John 10, 16, where Jesus says to us, And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. Thus far Jesus' words. Clearly Jesus points out here that not all the sheep are yet in the sheepfold. The reality is that not all the sheep will be gathered into the sheepfold of our Lord Christ until judgment day. Until that time, there are many to be gathered in. Jesus emphasizes for us here that there are unbelievers to be converted to believers and brought into his church. So how did Jesus make this come about? How does it come about? My answer to you is that Jesus, in part, instituted the office of the Holy Ministry. People who fill that office we typically call pastors. Pastors are the under-shepherds of Christ. They serve Christ by caring for the flock of people that God gathers into congregations. Congregations are formed because they are places where the means of grace are given out. Remember that the means of grace are the Word of God and the sacraments of baptism and Holy Communion. Your pastor, Pastor Wendt, is to faithfully preach and teach the Word of God to you and faithfully guide you in the practice of that word of God. And he is also publicly on your behalf to administer the sacraments of baptism and holy communion. And this he does for your blessing and benefits. The good shepherd, as a loving shepherd, sends to you the under shepherd. He has come because the Holy Spirit has called him to be here. Jesus, as the Good Shepherd, also gathers for pastors a flock, a flock of Christians in a locale. And as a real shepherd, without, as real sheep without a real shepherd are often in danger, so also it is that a flock of Christians without a spiritual leader can also be harassed by Satan and led into false belief and false practice of God's word. And that's why God provides pastors. So again, let me reiterate, God has set up the office of the holy ministry so that Christians are not left without spiritual care, spiritual guidance, and the public preaching and teaching of the word of God. The pastor is the God-given spiritual leader of this congregation and of any congregation that Jesus fills with pastors. Now, having said that, the pastor should not lord it over the sheep. Sheep are not to terrorize or disrespect the other shepherd of Christ on the other side of the coin, whom God has provided them with. Congregations are formed to be places where pastors and parishioners build one another up in the encouragement and support of one another in times of difficulty, as well as in the times that are of great joy. And insofar as both pastor and people strive to serve one another above themselves, it is beautiful and the God-pleasing gathering. Let me say that again. That's pretty important, what I just said. Insofar as both pastor and people strive to serve one another above themselves, then it is a beautiful and God-pleasing gathering. Note well that the mark of a spiritually healthy congregation is the mark of people regularly hearing, reading, marking, learning, 
and inwardly digesting God's Word. The more you read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest God's Word, the more blessed you will be. Certainly all the officers of this congregation should be in weekly Bible study that the pastor offers. And it, I'm not speaking just for the congregational leaders. Everyone, all members of this congregation should be involved in a weekly Bible study and divine service. The more members who do this, the healthier the Good Shepherd Lutheran congregation will be. Now thus far I've been primarily talking about inreach, that is, the care of the sheep who are already in the flock of our Lord Christ. And this is important. I don't want to minimize it. Pastors should be involved in diligent care, care of the flock which God has given them. Congregational members should be concerned about the other congregational members who are not here regularly. But remember, however, that Jesus says, and I quoted it to you, his words at the beginning of this sermon, that there are others who are not yet in his sheepfold. Congregations should not lose sight of the fact that they are constituted corporately reach out to the community and beyond, that is, corporately they are to be involved in outreach. And as I was sharing with Dr. Wendt earlier, this I believe is a primary reason, if not the primary reason that God forms people in the congregations, it is outreach. Martin Luther, reminds us, and I quote his words, the kingdom of Christ stands in becoming, not in being. The kingdom of Christ stands in becoming, not in being. Individually, we are all called to be God's witnesses in the daily vocations that we have in life. Corporately, congregations, as I've stressed, this is the second time I've said it, I'm going to say it one more time, corporately should have an intentional means of sharing the gospel of Christ with those around them who don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. We put in the effort, God brings about the growth. As a mission exec, when I talk to missionaries, I don't ask them, how many people have you brought in? I want to know, what have you done? Are you working? How many visits have you made? How many calls on people are you making? That's what I look for. I leave the growth up to God. He's the one who brings about the growth. And we need to, to realize that. But too often, too often I say, congregations don't even think about corporately reaching out. By corporately, I mean you as a congregation have strategy, goal, what you want to do to reach out to the community. Again, I remind you of Luther's words, the kingdom of Christ stands in becoming, not in being. So, what I'm trying to say bluntly, I will say now, congregations should intentionally and constantly be involved in reaching out to unbelievers within their community and beyond. Now I'm prepared to talk to you about the second text for this sermon, which is uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 21. Paul says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God is, was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The reality is that if any of us can call ourselves Christian, it is because of God's action. We have all trespassed God's law. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We all, due to our trespasses, deserve nothing but God's wrath and condemnation, condemnation of us. If God had not come to us 
and called us by name and made us his own, we wouldn't be Christians. The beauty of holy baptism is God comes to you through that means and gives you his name. Now, of course, baptism is not simple water only. It is water with the word. And so the word needs to be proclaimed and taught and shared. Passages such as this one, Ephesians 2, 1 to 3, back up what I'm saying. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in our passions, in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. And I already quoted this, but I'm going to give you the verse, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That little word, A-L-L, includes everybody. There's not one of us here who cannot say, who can say, that we're sinless. We're not. And in Romans 6.23, Paul says the wage that we earn with that, sin, is death. The bottom line is this. God must change us to give us life because apart from true faith in Christ Jesus, we are spiritually dead, as Paul reminds us, and we're under the wrath of God. The way that we are given spiritual life is by the Holy Spirit working through the gospel and the sacrament of holy baptism to call us into true faith. I've already stated this once in this sermon, but here's the key that I want you to take home and think about. In our conversion to true faith in Christ Jesus, God has used someone else. Who brought you to the holy font of baptism? Who shared the word of God with you? You recall that in your mind? God privileges us as Christians to share the faith with others, to speak his word to others. And he promises us that through that speaking, he is working. Paul talks about it when he says, how will they believe if no one comes to preach to them? If they cannot hear. How indeed. And that's why I said earlier, you as Christians are a witness to Christ in your daily vocations in life. So if you're a brother, you witness to your brother. If you're a son, you are obedient to your parents and witness to them and so forth, whatever your vocation in life is. But also we are privileged as, as members gathered together to think about those that we don't already have a relationship with and build that relationship that we might Bring the truth to them. Because unless the word of God is shared with someone, they will not be converted. Think about it. Do you have any neighbors that you really like that don't go to church? Do you care about them? Do you have compassion for them? Have you spoken to them, God's word? Have you invited them to this church? In a public manner, Christ sends out his under-shepherds as ambassadors who speak God's word of law and gospel to people that they develop relationships with. And that's what your pastor will do here in Lexington as well as in Richmond. We are reconciled to God when the Holy Spirit brings us into true faith by the gospel. You see, through the hand of faith, we receive the forgiveness that Jesus has earned for ourselves. And he earned it by living perfectly under the law of God for us, 
going to the cross of Calvary, taking your sin, my sin, the sin of all mankind upon himself, and paying for it once and for all. But as Luther once said, there's a million dollars, and I'm paraphrasing this, but if, if there's a million dollars in the bank in your name and you know nothing about it, what good does it do you? You have to know about it. And if that million dollars is in the bank but there's no way for you to receive it, what good does it do you? The Holy Spirit gives you faith, so through the hand of faith you receive all those blessings that Christ has for you. And the wonderful thing about the blessings of Christ is they don't run out. That's why he says there are more people to come into my sheep. It's a marvelous thing to know and to share. Dr. C.F.W. Walther, do you all know who he is? Pastor, you know, with the rest of it. <laughs> but probably not. And, uh, um, well, he was the first president of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Senate. Anyhow, his name is Carl Ferdinand Wilhelm Walter. Here's what he wrote. And I quote, The Christian church is a great mission society. Every Christian within it is a missionary sent out by God to convert other people within the circle of his acquaintance to Christ, to invite them to the heavenly marriage, to call them to God's kingdom, and everywhere to recruit soldiers to win the eternal treasure and warriors for Christ's army. End of Walther's words. Pastor Wendt and members of Good Shepherd Lutheran, God bless you as you encourage one another in the Christian faith and as you together share the gospel message of Jesus Christ and forgiveness of sins and life everlasting throughout Lexington, Richmond, and beyond. And to all Christians here today, I want you to understand and know that you are all pastors and people part of this great Christian church mission society that Walther talks about. Because for him, the great Christian church mission society is the church. You, all are, you are all missionaries sent out by God to share God's word to the lost and erring. You are sent out to invite and bring people to Bible study and divine service so that in learning and hearing of God's word, unbelievers might be converted by the Holy Spirit to true faith in Christ Jesus. God guide you and bless your efforts to serve God and your neighbor above yourself in this great mission endeavor. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the true faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. We rise and join together in confessing our Christian faith in the form of the Nicene Creed, which is printed on page 8 in your bulletin. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all the invisible and invisible, and in one Lord. Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, meaning of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for our sin and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. And who was crucified also for us under conscious power. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended to heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who goes to the Son together is worshiped and glorified. Who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I hope for the resurrection of the dead.
and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Through the church's usual order, the Reverend Dr. Vernon Wendt, Jr. has been called by the Lord of the Church to be pastor of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church and the Outreach Kentucky Mission, Richmond. Please stand. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us. Good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, help us, the Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, O Lord, to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Amen. You may be seated. Hear what Holy Scripture says concerning the institution of the office of the Holy Ministry. From the Gospel of Matthew, the 28th chapter, beginning at the 18th verse, we read, Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, to the end of the age. From John 20, Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is God's word. God's word. Hear what Holy Scripture says concerning the responsibilities of the office of the Holy Ministry. From John 21, when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love him. Feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Luke 24, Jesus said to them, thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from <clears> Jerusalem. <throat> from 1 Corinthians 11, chapter. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. 
and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance. 1 Timothy chapter 4, do not neglect the gift that you have, which was given you by prophecy when the council of elders laid their hands on you. Practice these things, devote yourself to them, so that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persistentness, for by doing so, you will save both yourself and your hearers. First Corinthians 4, this is how one should regard us, as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they should be found trustworthy. And 2 Corinthians 3, such is the confidence that we have through, through Christ toward God. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything as coming from us, but our sufficiency is from God. Second Corinthians chapter 5, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Well, this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. From 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing at his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves <coughs> teachers to suit their own passion and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. 1 Timothy 3, with all dignity keeping his children submissive, for if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become puffed up with conceit and fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders, so that he may not fall into disgrace and into a snare of the devil. Some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. From Acts 20. Take heed to yourselves and to all the flock, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. From 1 Peter 5. Shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you'll receive the unfading crown of glory. Here what Holy Scripture says concerning the strength and promise God gives to those in the office of the Holy Ministry. From Matthew chapter 5, beginning at the 13th verse, 
Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall, it, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set, a city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. From 2 Corinthians 10. But the one who boasts, boasts in the Lord. For it is not the one who commends himself who is approved, but the one whom the Lord commends. 2 Timothy, the third chapter. Continue in the things which you have learned and have been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for all doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. You would step forward now. Dear brother in Christ, the Lord grant that you receive and keep these words in your heart so that you may be strengthened and encouraged in your labor. In the presence of this congregation and before our Lord God, to whom you must give an account now and at the last day, I now ask you, do you acknowledge that the Lord has called you through his church into the ministry of word and sacrament? I do. Do you believe and confess the canonical books of the Old and New Testaments to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice? Yes, I believe and confess the canonical scriptures to be the inspired word of God, the only infallible rule of faith and practice. Do you believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds, namely the Apostles, the Nicene, and the Athanasian creeds, as faithful testimonies to the truth of the Holy Scriptures, and do you reject all the errors which they condemn? Yes, I believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds because they are in accord with the Word of God. I also reject all the errors they condemn. Do you confess the unaltered Augsburg Confession to be a true exposition of Holy Scripture and a correct exhibition of the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? And do you confess that the apology of the Augsburg Confession, the small and large catechisms of Martin Luther, the small called articles, the treatise on the power and primacy of the Pope, and the formula of Concord as these are contained in the Book of Concord, are also in agreement with this one scriptural faith? Yes, I make these confessions my own because they are in accord with the Word of God. Do you promise that you will perform the duties of your office in accordance with these confessions and that all your preaching and teaching and your administration of the sacraments will be in conformity with Holy Scripture and with these confessions? Yes, I promise with the help of God. Will you faithfully instruct both young and old in the chief articles of Christian doctrine? Will you forgive the sins of those who repent and will you promise never to divulge the sins confessed to you? Will you minister faithfully to the sick and dying? And will you demonstrate to the church a constant and ready ministry centered in the gospel? Will you admonish and encourage the people to a lively confidence in Christ and in holy living? Yes, I will with the help of God. Finally, you honor and adorn the office of the holy ministry with a holy life. Will you be diligent in the study of holy scripture and the confessions? And will you be constant in prayer for those under your pastoral care? The Lord helping me to the power and grace of the Holy Spirit. And now I speak to the entire congregation. Beloved in the Lord, holy scripture says, obey your leaders and submit to their authority. 
They keep watch over you as men who must give an account. Obey them so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that would be of no advantage to you. You have heard the solemn promise of him called to be your pastor. Will you receive him? Show him that love, honor, and obedience in the Lord that you owe to the shepherd and teacher placed over you by your Lord Jesus Christ. And will you support him by your gifts and pray for him always that in his labors he may retain a cheerful spirit and that his ministry among you may be abundantly blessed? If so, then answer, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. Will you honor and uphold your pastor as he serves Christ in all his God-pleasing responsibilities? Will you aid him as he cares for his family? Will you be diligent to put the best construction on everything, recognizing that love covers a multitude of sins? If so, then answer, we will, with the help of God. We will, with the help of God. The Almighty and most merciful God, strengthen and assist you always. Are you willing and ready to assume this public trust and responsibility? I am. Reverend Dr. Vernon Webb, Jr., I install you as pastor of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church and the Outreach Kentucky Mission Richmond in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good, that you may do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please stand for the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we serve at all times and all places. Give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. We have mightily governed and protected your holy church, in which the blessed apostles and evangelists proclaim the divine and saving gospel. Therefore, the patriarchs and prophets, apostles and evangelists, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. We will speak the Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. The Lord's Supper is prepared. Come and receive God's forgiveness through his bread.
Stand for the post communion canticle, and we will speak that as well. Thank you. The Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He recalls his promises and leads his people forth in joy to the shouts of thanksgiving. Alleluia! Alleluia! The Lord be with you. And also with you. For all your mighty deeds and signs of old. We give thanks and praise to the Lord. For taking on our human flesh to save us. We give you thanks and praise to the Lord. For your abiding presence and word and sacrament. We give you thanks and praise to the Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.